The first idea for the Canale Emiliano Romagnolo goes back to Abbot Terelli, who suggested that Duke Cesare d'Este should divert water from the River Po for irrigation purposes upstream from Piacenza. During the Napoleonic period, two engineers, Perea and Bolognini, were asked to re-examine his project. During this period, an attempt was also made to connect the River Reno with the Po via an artificial canal, today still known as the Cavo Napoleonico. After the unification of Italy in 1861, a Bolognese engineer and agronomist called Annibale Certani presented a new project. And, at the end of the 19th century, yet another was proposed, this time the work of engineer Italo Maganzini. These projects were re-examined in the 20th century by Mario Giandotti, a planning authority engineer and later government commissioner of the chair. The Canale Emiliano Romagnolo Land Reclamation Syndicate was set up in 1939. Its mission was to design, build and operate irrigation works in the southeastern plain of Emilia Romagna. In 1941, this project received initial formal Office of Public Works approval, but at the time war was raging. In 1947, work did start on a downsized version of the project, with a main diverting point at Salvatonica di Mondeno on the Po River, where the new Napoleonic Canal, redesigned by Giandotti, joined the Po. After disastrous breaches of the banks of the Reno in 1949 and 1950 at Gallo and Poggio Renatico, Giandotti's project to overhaul the Napoleonic Canal was set in motion. The Napoleonic Canal, also known as the River Reno Flood Relief Channel, is an imposing unlined canal. It links the Reno at Panfilia di Sant'Agostino to the Po at Salvatonica di Bondeno. The canal was to function as both a relief channel for Reno flood waters and as the initial channel for the Canale Emiliano Romagnolo. The Canale Emiliano Romagnolo is one of the most important water infrastructures in Italy and acts, though not exclusively, as a conduit for irrigation surface water, serving an area which is particularly lacking in water and has no alternative sources. From its very inception, it has been an important economic and social resource for the Emilia Romagna region. of six provinces, Ferrara, Bologna, Modena, Ravenna, Policesenna and Rimini, and five separate land reclamation syndicates, Burana, Renana, Pianura di Ferrara, Eastern Romagna and Romagna. Our associates, together with the municipality of Ravenna and RSI, Ravenna Industrial Services, and any group company. The water available to the syndicate comes from the River Po with a flow rate of 68 meters cube per second from May to September and 25 meters cube per second during the rest of the year. The River Reno with a flow rate of 1.5 meters cube per second from April to September and 2 meters cubed per second during the rest of the year. At Volta Scirocco, in the municipality of Ravenna, at approximately five kilometers from the mouth of the river Reno, a movable dam 
enables water to be diverted from the river to supply the Ravenna petroleum and chemical complex. Ravenna drinking water plant and irrigation users in the areas to the north of the city. The Palantone pumping station, Salvatonica di Bondeno, is the mainstay of the system, diverting water from the Po. Palantona station raises water using four main and four auxiliary electric pumps, which differ in their construction, type, age and power. The pumps, which are constantly monitored by operators, lift water from the Po, feeding it into the Napoleonic Canal. The flow rate which the station can provide for its present plant is 50 cubic meters per second. It should be noted that the average flow rate of the pump is 1,500 cubic meters per second. The station has pumps with an overall power of 5,490 kilowatts, while monthly consumption in the summer is 1,240,000 kilowatt hours. Note that the average energy consumption of a household is 300 kilowatt hours. In the Napoleonic Canal, which has a horizontal bed, the water flows by gravity for around 16 kilometers, reaching Sant'Agostino. At Sant'Agostino, on the other bank of the Napoleonic Canal, a branch begins which via the Sant'Agostino Ovest and Cento lifting plants, supplies water to the Reno West Bank Water District. And at Sant'Agostino, on the east bank of the Napoleonic Canal, the main canal starts. The Napoleonic Canal Diversion Sluis has an auxiliary lifting plant. pumps function only when the water level in the Napoleonic Canal is lower than the level that must be maintained in the chair. This is where the chair commenced its long journey in 1955, and today this journey continues into the province of Rimini. Even a child knows that water flows downhill, but thanks to its lifting stations, the Canale Emiliano Romagnolo could be considered a river that flows uphill. In fact, the river Po is situated in the valley line, that is to say, a line linking the lowest points in the plain. The average level of the Po is around four meters above sea level, while at Pieve di Cento, the chair reaches 70 meters above sea level its highest point. The height difference to be overcome is equivalent to a four-story building. Between Sant'Agostino and Galliera, the chair flows under the River Reno through a 520 meter long underground tunnel. Along its course, the canal intersects many lines of communication and other waterways. The continuity is provided for by bridges and underground tunnels. After passing under the River Reno, the chair has to face its first uphill step of around four meters. At the 
Creven thaws a plant, the water is raised to a level of 13 metres above sea level, using electric pumps, which are similar to those at Palantone, but which deliver slightly lower water flow rate and hydraulic head. After a further 8 km stretch, the water level rises even higher, thanks to the Pieve di Cento plant, reaching 17 metres above sea level. This, the highest point reached by the chair, enables the canal to flow on by gravity for 90 kilometers down to the River Savio crossing, north of Cesena. Along this extensive stretch, Chair maintains the classic trapezoidal cross-section of artificial canals, but with gradually decreasing cross-sections and water flow rates. Slope 5 centimeters per kilometer, 20 times less than the usual slope for irrigation canals, is made possible by its internal lining, which reduces friction and prevents vegetation growth. At the Savio plant, on the left bank of the river of the same name, the water level is raised for the last time from 14 to 16 meters. The Savio is crossed via an entirely zinc-plated metal tube bridge, an exceptionally distinguished work of engineering, and the only example of this kind along the canal. This is the most recently built plant, thanks to which the water continues its course to the point where today the canal comes to an end. The chair was built using two main construction types. From the flood relief section of the River Savio, the chair is basically a trapezoidal cross-section canal, either excavated from the land or delimited by embankments according to local altitude. Its internal bed is lined with cement, while the external parts exhibit grassy cover. From the River Savio to the River Uso, the chair becomes a rectangular cross-section structure built entirely in reinforced concrete. Within the Cesena Centuriation, the ancient Roman land division grid, the chair has done its utmost to accommodate the anthropic, historical and natural aspects of the area. To reduce impact on the area to a minimum, the chair adapts its course, zigzagging along the Cesena Centuriation instead of following the Via Emilia. To maintain the perfectly preserved Roman grid, which today still forms the basis of local property ownership patterns. So today, the chair is totally integrated into the landscape. For the time being, the canal ends its course in the proximity of the River Uso, after the final lift provided by the Savio plant. The chair does not flow into the sea. Where do the waters of the chair finish their journey? The water of the chair, precious because of its high quality and costly because of the lifting energy provided four times along its course, must not be thrown away, into the sea or anywhere else. The water must flow on to its destination. All of the water must be delivered to the syndicate's associates. The land reclamation syndicates use the waters of the chair in essentially two ways. The most advanced type of use is in pressurised water supply systems, fed by a pumping and lifting station on the canal. They distribute water for irrigation throughout the area, often repressurising it several times along the system, until it finally reaches the farms where hydrants are in service. A more rudimentary distribution system is made possible by gravity diversions which feed the irrigation canals intersected by the chair.
A significant proportion of the waters of the chair, 15 to 20 percent of the total, is diverted at the intersection with the river Lamone near Faenza and fed into the river. After a journey of about 40 kilometers, the water reaches the non-agricultural associates operating in the northern district of Ravenna. When it starts operating at full capacity, all farmers will receive their water from the chair via pressurized supply systems and their own hydrants. Until these distribution systems are built, farmers, who are canal frontages, provisionally permitted to use mobile pumps to extract water from the chair. Of course, water from the chair is suitable for other important uses and not only for agriculture. For the last 10 years, an internal laboratory has been monitoring the water of the chair, making periodical analyses. Although the water of the chair is diverted from the river Po, its quality is not affected by the well-known problems afflicting this great river. This is thanks to a series of circumstances. The Napoleonic Canal performs a drastic purification action due to a generally low flow rate, the vast interaction surface with the atmosphere, the action of the sun's rays, and above all, phytopurification processes performed by aquatic vegetation. Hydraulic isolation of this canal protects the water from the inflow of wastewater, sewage, or any form of polluted water. Continuous contact with the atmosphere takes place along its entire course. During the 2007 water crisis, two water purification plants were put into service at Faenza and at Cesena, at intersections with the Romagna aqueduct. They treat the water of the chair, feeding it into the water main system. The chair also performs an important mission in the environmental field, makes surface water available to replenish groundwater. In this way, the chair is protecting the area from the dangerous phenomenon of subsidence. Subsidence is the gradual sinking of the land surface relative to its previous level. It is very common in the Emilia-Romagna region and is mainly caused by extracting quantities of water from wells beyond the natural capacity for replenishment consequently lowering water tables. This phenomenon is extremely serious because it's irreversible. Water is an important resource. The syndicate not only distributes water, it also researches the best ways to use it. Marsili Experimental Farm is a farm which the syndicate runs as a testing ground for comparing, experimenting with and cataloguing irrigation methods, materials and techniques. The farm has 15 hectares of field as its operational base, where it implements a range of agronomic testing activities. Focusing on energy saving, the Marsili Farm tests various strategies involving a number of factors, such as soil composition and precipitation measured using sensors and rain gauges. The farm carries out practical experiments on various irrigation techniques and different irrigators. Then catalogues them on the basis of the ratings they have obtained and publishes information sheets accessible to end users online through Techniri, an online irrigation equipment service. The results obtained over many decades of experimentation are collected on IRINET, a free online and text message service available to all farming businesses in Emilia-Romagna. It provides irrigation-linked advice about what and how much 
Action needs to be taken to obtain quality produce while saving water. Since 2000, Shea has embraced multiple water use as a strategic choice, thus also dedicating energy and resources towards civil, industrial, tourist and environmental uses. State funding, made available since 2001, has enabled construction of an impressive set of secondary supply distribution systems for multiple use of the waters of the chair. A number of interventions have been carried out in the following areas. River Selice, River Santerno, near the city of Imola. River Senio, River Lamone, near the city of Faenza. River Montone, between Faenza and the western sector of Forlì. River Ronco, River Bevano, between Forlì and Forlimpopoli. River Bevano, River Savio, in the western sector of Cesena. River Bevano, Fiumi Uniti, near Ravenna. The new supply lines feed local distribution networks. The system is designed to create minimum impact on the area. It consists of underground pipes supplying water at medium-high pressure, five atmospheres and more, thus relieving the end user from having to pressurize the water further. The chair has not yet run its full course. Plans to extend the chair to the far end of the territory of Emilia-Romagna are already well advanced. After a first three-kilometer stretch to the river Marecchia, using a channel with a rectangular reinforced concrete cross-section, it will be possible for the water to continue to the river Conca, with a 30-kilometer long buried conduit. Thus, the Canale Emiliano-Romagnolo continues its century-long journey, which has made it an integral part of the region. Almost a river, but instead of being created by nature, sprang from the idea of a man. In the 